These are the 0.2b notes for pre-calc. We're going to be solving equations using square roots. So example number one, x squared minus 49 equals 0. Instead of having this set equal to 0, we want to get x squared by itself. So we'll start by adding 49 to both sides. And then we'll square root both sides to get rid of the exponent. So anytime you have a square root or a square, you'll get rid of it by square rooting. The square root and the square cancel, getting us x equals, and it is important that you need a plus or minus sign when you're solving these. So plus and minus 7. Don't forget the plus and minus sign. All right, for example number 2, again, we'll move the 15 to the other side. We'll square root. And I'll still need the plus or minus sign, except for this time, 15 is not a perfect square. It also, if you break it down into a factor tree, just gives you 3 and a 5. And without any pairs of numbers, it does not simplify. So we'll leave it as the square root of 15. Noticing again, each of these still has two answers, the positive and the negative version. Example number 3. 12 is already on the other side, so x squared is by itself. We'll start by square rooting. Now this time for a 12, I'm going to make a factor tree. And I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to 12. I'll use 3 times 4. Then I'll break down the 4, numbers that multiply to 4, 2 times 2. Any pairs of numbers are going to go on the outside of the square root bar, and any singles will go on the inside. So a 2 on the outside, and the single 3 would be on the inside. So 2 square root of 3. And both of those are just decimals, so if you wanted to check your answer, you could type in the square root of 12 into your calculator, and then you can type in 2 square root of 3 into your calculator. They should get you the same decimal. All right, for 4 and 5, again, we'll be trying to get the x squared by itself. I'll subtract 14. And then before we square root, you have to get x squared by itself. So you have to divide by the 2 first. Don't square root yet. Once x squared is by itself, square root both sides. And you get plus and minus 2. Sometimes you'll also see the answers written as like x equals 2 and x equals negative 2. Sometimes I'll write them separately. For number 5, we're going to start by distributing that 5 into the parentheses. 5x squared minus 30 plus 7 equals 7. You could have also moved the 7 over and divided by 5 if you wanted to. I find this way to be a little bit easier. Combine like terms. Move the 23 to the other side by adding. Make sure you divide by 5 next. Don't square root it until the x squared is by itself. Then you can square root at the end. And 6, if you make it into a factor tree, only leaves you 2 and 3. So no pairs meaning it just stays the square root of 6. Two answers there because of the plus or minus sign. All right, the problems on the back are very specific. This is when you have the exponent on the outside. Exponent outside the parentheses. Do not distribute the exponent. 
do not distribute the exponent. Exponents don't work the same way as numbers do in front. You cannot distribute the exponent into what's inside the parentheses. So what we'll do instead is we will square root immediately so we can get rid of that exponent. So square root both sides. The square root and the square cancel, leaving me x plus 5. And then I end up with the square root of 36, which is 6. But don't forget your plus or minus sign. It's going to come in a little bit earlier here than it did on the last problems. Now, once you have this, the best way to do it is to write it into two problems. Split up the plus or minus sign. So one equation will look like x plus 5 equals 6, positive, and x plus 5 equals negative 6, negative. So you're taking that plus or minus sign and splitting it up. And from there you can solve. There's one answer, x equals 1. And your other answer, x equals negative 11. Example 7, same thing. We don't want to distribute the square. We also don't want to distribute the 4 because the whole thing is being squared. So if you remember order of operations, it's parentheses, then exponents, before we do the multiply. So we're just going to move everything away from the parentheses. Add 49. Get rid of the 4 by dividing. And then once you have the parentheses squared by itself, then you can square root both sides. The square root cancels out the square. We put a plus or minus sign every time we square root something. And the square root of 9 is 3. And that's when you would split your plus or minus sign. And you have to split it on these problems because there's still more math to do. We didn't have to split it on the other ones because we were done with the problem. But this one is going to involve us still moving the 7 over. 1 positive, 1 negative, 3. And subtract 7. Right, there we go.